knows more about hygiene than ever before, especially since the pandemic hit the global scene. One thing we know is how important hand hygiene is to public and personal health. But there's much more to it than simply grabbing your favorite hand sanitizer and using it. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into the topic of hand hygiene and understanding regulatory issues. And to do that, we welcome Nate Gobert, the manager of research and new product development at Spartan Chemical Company Incorporated. Welcome, Nate. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you, Jeff, for having me on this program. Looking forward to talking about this topic. It's an important topic, and I look forward to digging into it. Before we do that, I want to mention a few things about you, Nate, to set you up as the expert you are. Uh, not everyone knows this, but you have an impressive bio. Uh, you've been a member of Spartan's research and development team since 2006. As a formulator, you've added some 45 products or more to Spartan's product catalog, mainly in the laundry and wear wash categories. In 2014, Nate, you were promoted to manager of research and new product development, where you work in sales and marketing to deliver strategic and innovative product solutions. Do I have that right so far, Nate? So far, that sounds pretty accurate. All right. Maybe the most important part is this. You received your undergraduate degree from Texas A&M and your master's at Ohio State University. Do you want to say it? Yes, I do. Go Bucks. All right. I think we've set this up nicely. Go Bucks. I see the picture on your wall. So that's verification you've been to the horseshoe. I imagine many times. Nice. Yeah. So let's get into our topic today. And I have a few questions for you. Let's start with this one. What government agency regulates hand sanitizers and are they considered drugs? Yeah, so uh, hand sanitizers are, and all hand antiseptic hand hygiene products are regulated as over-the-counter drugs by the uh, FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. Um, the FDA's tentative final monograph the listing of all the acceptable uh, active ingredients that can be used in antiseptic hand rubs, um, which are actually what uh, the FDA considers hand sanitizers, they're antiseptic hand rubs. Uh, the three active ingredients you can use are ethyl alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and benzoconium chloride, also known as BZK. Well, thank you, Nate, for that information. I thought PCMX was part of this. Can you talk about that? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a very good follow-up on that. Um, PCMX or chlorxylenol is an active ingredient that's allowable for antiseptic hand washing, uh, but not antiseptic hand rubs. Uh, and hand sanitizers, antiseptic hand rubs uh, are basically the same type of thing. Hand sanitizer is easy for the general public to understand, uh, but those are leave-on um, active ingredients. So isopropanol, ethyl alcohol, those evaporate very quickly. Stay, they don't really stay on your skin. Benzoconium chloride, uh, is a very mild antimicrobial uh, active ingredient that's allowable at low levels to stay on your skin. Uh, PCMX, while being very effective as an antiseptic hand wash, it can be a little too irritating if left on the skin and not rinsed off. So you can't use PCMX on an antiseptic hand rub or hand sanitizer. So Nate, thank you for that information. Let me ask you this. The FDA regulates hand hygiene products. Is there a set of rules that you need to follow as a manufacturer with that? Uh, it's a funny part about dealing with the FDA, uh, especially in comparison to the other regulatory agency that Spartan Chemical deals with uh, more extensively, which is the EPA. Uh, the FDA in the final ten monograph has outlined uh, specific active ingredients that you can use and the use levels that are allowable for minimum and maximum. Uh, but as far as manufacturing procedures um, and things like of that nature, the FDA issues certain guidances. Uh, but they don't uh, regulate prior to introducing a product to market. So you need to follow their guidance, which leaves a lot of room for interpretation. Let's put it that way. That's the polite way of saying it. Um, and then after you have a product on the market that the FDA can regulate, whether it be an antiseptic hand rub or an antiseptic hand wash, uh, you were then subject to FDA auditing. Uh, so they come in and they check your compliance based off of their interpretation of their guidance. Uh, and sometimes if your interpretation of their guidance doesn't match up with their interpretation, uh, you can end up in some regulatory hurdles, um, warning letters, uh, some other uh, enforcement actions, which are never pleasant uh, as a manufacturer. Whereas the EPA uh, regulates prior to you going to the market. So in EPA registered disinfectants and sanitizers, there's a very stringent list of 
testing and uh, manufacturing considerations you have to do prior uh, to actually releasing a product that's EPA registered. Um, through the EPA registration process, you ultimately get to the end of the end of that registration process and they tell you either it passes or it fails. And if you get an EPA registration approval, uh, you as long as you manufacture it in the way you told them you would do it and manufacture it the, with the ingredients that you said, uh, you're not really going to be subject to a compliance action by the EPA because they've given you their go ahead um, before you go to market. Uh, so there is a little bit of a, there's a big difference between how the FDA and the EPA regulate products. Let's segue a little bit, Nate, into disinfectants. You know, I'm no chemist like you, I'm no expert, but I know disinfectants kill pathogens and bacteria, things that we want dead. Can they be used as a hand sanitizer? Makes sense to me. Oh, no. Oh, please. No. Uh, dis EPA registered disinfectants and sanitizers are meant solely to be used on hard, non pore surfaces. Uh, they are not meant for skin contact whatsoever. Uh, the types of surfaces that we're looking at killing bacteria, viruses, yeast, molds, things like that through the EPA, uh, one use uh, all the raw, almost all the raw materials that can be used in a registered disinfectant are not on the FDA uh, tentative final monograph. So they are not applicable for human skin contact. Uh, pHs all, are all over the place um, with disinfectants. Uh, you do not want to use a EP registered sanitizer or disinfectant on your skin whatsoever. Those are inanimate objects. I've never done it. I just had to ask the question. So that's, I know yeah. that's no, it's, throughout the height of the pandemic. We got asked that all the time. Really? Said, okay. You got this food contact sanitizer. Uh, can I just use it on my hands? No, it's food contact, hard surface, not skin. I'm glad I'm not the only one with the question. Thank you, Nate. You're welcome. Um, if you're not using an antimicrobial hand soap, is it still effective washing your hands? Are you helping prevent the spread of disease and infection? Oh, 100%. Um, actually, the most effective thing you can do, whether it's in this pandemic or any time when you're trying to prevent the spread of germs or spread of infection, is to wash your hands. Uh, properly washing your hands with warm running water to wet your hands, lather up with a good hand soap. Uh, make sure you're rubbing your hands briskly for at least 20 seconds, scrubbing all your surfaces, thumbs, fingers, in between everything. Remove rings, jewelry uh, to make sure you, you wash all the surfaces of your hands for at least 20 seconds. Rinse it with clean running water. Dry your hands with a clean towel or disposable paper towel. Uh, that's the best way to remove not just the gross soils that are on your hands, uh, but uh, pathogens, germs uh, that are hidden there that you can't see, but we do know that they're there. Uh, hand soaps, whether they're general purpose hand soaps, foaming hand soaps, gel hand soaps, or an antiseptic hand soap, um, removing, the phys removing the pathogens physically and rinsing them down the drain is the most efficient way uh, to get rid of a bulk of the things that are on your skin uh, and the best way to stop the spread of infection. Um, I thought most hand sanitizers were alcohol-based. Correct. So uh, for whatever reason, the CDC during the height of the pandemic was telling everyone to use alcohol-based hand sanitizers, but there's plenty on the market that are based around benzocone and chloride. Again, for the same reason that I said, if you have situations where you don't want a concern of something that contains greater than 60% ethyl alcohol, uh, which is the same uh, ingredient found in adult beverages, uh, you don't want to use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer where mm. you have to worry about an intoxicant. And again, products that are this high in alcohol are flammable. Uh, so there is issues there. Um, you will also find in many facilities that have uh, floor finished or uh, polished uh, vinyl composite tile, uh, alcohol chews through the floor finish and renders some issues there in facility maintenance. So uh, benzoconium chloride-based hand sanitizers definitely have their place in the market. Um, just right alongside the alcohol-based ones. Okay. My, my next question, Nate, is kind of two parts. How do I know if an antiseptic hand hygiene product is going to kill germs? And why aren't there any bacteria or viruses listed on the label like we see with disinfectants? I know you touched a bit on that before. Can you expand on that? Yep. So this comes back to uh, different federal agencies, different uh, codes of federal regulation compliance, but EPA registered products you specifically have to test against the pathogens that you're going to market the product to kill. 
Um, because hand sanitizers and antiseptic hand washes are meant to control or reduce the population of bacteria on your skin and are a drug, you cannot market the products as killing specific things because it would then inherently uh, customer or um, individuals could interpret it as meaning that it could help kill an Ill illness. Um, and that's not what these do. Uh, the FDA's final tentative monograph for hand sanitizers and antiseptic hand washes um, specifically outlays 26 bacteria, yeast, and molds uh, that you should, that these, that the three active ingredients that are allowable in hand sanitizers should kill. Um, manufacturers that are doing their due diligence do their own time kill studies to prove this out. Um, but again, you cannot, um, under FDA guidance, you cannot market a product as killing these organisms, even if you own the data, you can't sell the product based on this. Um, so that you don't give the inherent, uh, the inherent uh, advice that you, that this is a drug that could um, kill this in your body. It's just on, on the surface of your skin. Mm -hmm. And it is very important to note, you will not see viral, you should not see viral mm -hmm. claims with the FDA. Antiseptic hand sanitizers and hand washes are antibacterial um, yeast and yeast and mold. So they'll kill bacteria and yeast and mold on your skin. Uh, they, you cannot market a claim um, with a virus claim that is um, very much um, illegal marketing in the eyes of the FDA. And they will come after you if you were making those antiviral claims. There it is again. You get in trouble. That's not good. So, so you're saying, sense. Nate, on hand sanitizers, I Spartan, we're not going to see the words, this kills COVID. That is 100% correct. Uh, FDA guidance, you cannot make antiviral claims with these types of products. You may see someone out there saying that, but mm -hmm. it's only a matter of time before the FDA comes knocking on your door uh, if you're making those claims. I can envision people looking at their hand sanitizers now wondering if it says that. So we just sent everyone on a, on a chase, a scavenger hunt. Yeah, take a look at it. You'll know whether or not you're making, you're dealing with a good product. Good information. Um, talk to us about the differences between some terminology, antiseptic, antibacterial, antimicrobial. Okay, so let's start with the last one that you said, antimicrobial. Antimicrobial gives the uh, inference of being any type of microbe. Now this could be bacteria, this could be yeast, this could be mold, this could be virus. Um, so you should not see something claiming to be antimicrobial when we're talking about an FDA regulated product, uh, hand sanitizer, antiseptic hand wash. Uh, antiseptic and antibacterial refer to the same thing. Uh, generally, antiseptic is a little bit more uh, of a robust term because it brings in that yeast and mold um, idea. So oftentimes you will see on a drug pack label with an FDA product um, saying uh, that it is the active ingredient is an antiseptic. It's meant there to kill yeast, mold, and bacteria. Nate, as a final question, any words of advice for our audience? Yeah, so my final words of advice, we kind of hit on this a little bit, is whenever possible, wash your hands thoroughly and often, um, whether it's cold and flu season, whether we're in the middle of a pandemic, um, whether you're um, working around food or any type of environment, when you can, wash your hands thoroughly. Um, and hand sanitizers are meant for those cases where you just can't get to soap and, and fresh water. Um, so those are my final words of advice. Good words, and thank you for what you do with Spartan and keeping the world safer and cleaner, especially with hand hygiene. Thank you, Nate. <laughs>